time for Undercovered, a chance for us to bring you up to speed on a story you may not have heard a whole lot about. We're talking about a new report on suicide, specifically how many people may actually be considering it. This is what I'm talking about. The report shows more than 8 million Americans had suicidal thoughts. Just over 2 million actually made suicide plans, and 1 million people attempted suicide. The majority of those ended up in emergency rooms with their self-inflicted injuries. Around 35,000 people commit suicide every year, which of course is a very disturbing number. And in these unstable economic times, it can sadly be seen as a way out for some. Joining me now to help dig a little bit deeper into the problem is Dr. Linda DeGudis, the director of the CDC's National Center for Injury Prevention and Control. Uh, doctor, let me ask you first, I mean, how significant are these numbers? What should we take away from them? Well, what we should take away from it is that suicide is a very complex problem and there are many factors that contribute to it, but this is the first time we've really had information on suicide attempts and suicide thoughts in the general population. And do you find that there is a big difference or does this show that there's, there's any difference at all between men and women when it comes to suicide or attempts? Women do have a higher rate of contemplation of suicide, thinking about suicide, than men do. A higher rate of contemplation. And yes, in apparently. terms of the manner, is there a difference in the manner of how they go about it? Um, this study in itself didn't look at that, uh, didn't look at the manner of suicide. When you look at the, what's happened with, with our economy, how much would you say the recession and then the economic situation could play a role in, in these numbers? Well, we do know that um, for people who did not have jobs at, at, during the time of the, um, the interview, they, there was a higher incidence of suicide in that group. However, it's a very complex kind of thing where there's a lot of factors that um, really play into it. So it's not having a job in combination with other factors that may contribute to whether or not someone thinks about suicide, actually attempts it, um, or has made a plan for suicide. And does geography play a role here at all? I mean, do you see a difference from state to state? We do see some differences from state to state, um, and what we can do about that is it can help us to target interventions. Some states had far lower rates of both um, suicide thought, you know, people with suicidal thoughts, people who had attempted suicide, and so we can basically design interventions on a state-by-state -state basis to help address the specific risk factors in the states. So then in the end, do you think this could then help with prevention efforts? This really can help with prevention efforts because it brings it to light, it gives us something that we can educate the public about, and it gives us an opportunity to intervene as we know that there are more people who are thinking about suicide who are attempting it, obviously, than who actually commit suicide. Dr. Linda DeGudis, appreciate your time and your insight there. Thank you very much. And we do want to tell you about the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. The number is 1-800-273-TALK. Once again, it's 1-800-273-8255. For you or anyone that you know who may need someone to talk to, this is a very important resource.